Hey guys, I'm MySpace and I'm here with my buddy Arthur and uh, I brought him on for this podcast because I noticed him and some other people on my Facebook talking about an article from NPR titled Men Looking to Get Ripped and Are at Risk of Abusing Legal su- Supplements. In the uh, caption above it on, on Facebook it says the study also found that the men using workout su- supplements like wheat protein, uh, creatine, and L-carnitine cr- I'm sorry if I butchered those pronunciations. We're more likely to feel gender role conflict, which the author explained as underlining insecurity about one's masculinity. And uh, apparently they went on to other things within the article that my buddy Arthur would touch upon here. And the reason why I brought him on is because I saw a Facebook post from him where he just went totally against the article. He put put out a whole bunch of explanations as to why he believes it's wrong. I saw that. I was interested. I wanted to give him a voice. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm giving my buddy Arthur a voice here. Uh, Arthur, uh, thanks for uh, doing this. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right, cool. So before you go into your explanations, I want to ask you, um, what makes you think that people should listen to your opinion on this article on, on like bodybuilding and the possible dangers, if there are any, of bodybuilding? Well, I don't know if I'm the person to talk to about bodybuilding because that is not what I lift for. I, I'm a power lifter. Um, body, there, there's a big difference. Power lifters care how much weight they can pick up. Um, bodybuilders are the ones who are more interested in size and muscle symmetry and how they look and stuff like that. However, a few of my friends are bodybuilders, and I understand their training regimen and their mindset very well. Um, So aside from me myself being in the weightlifting field, I also work at a store that just so happens to sell a lot of these supplements, and I've gone through quite a bit of training, and I am, let's just say I have extensive knowledge about um, just about every single weightlifting supplement there is to be known. And uh, Arthur, you are right. I apologize for that, people. Actually, it's, we're talking about legal s- supplements, and I should have explained that. And uh, yes, yes, I should have mentioned. I should have. Re- I, sh- I yeah, yes. We get the we get the idea. So um, yes, Arthur, uh, tell us exactly what you find wrong with the NPR article. Well, I think the most I think the most important claim that the article is making is that the abuse of these supplements is what leads to uh, what the article refers to as body dysmorphia. Now, body dysmorphia is a real condition that that exists uh, where people do not fully see themselves as the way they want to be. So this can come itself from two different angles. Um, You can be the anorexics um, who continually see themselves as too fat, and they keep trying to get skinnier. And then there's multiple terms for it. Uh, some people call it anorexia athletica, um, reverse anorexia. There's a couple of different terms for it. I don't think anyone has ever decided on one real one, which is the exact opposite, where people always see themselves as too small and they want to continuously get larger body parts, massive arms, big chest, and those are your bodybuilder types. And what the article seemed to suggest is that the use of supplements leads to body dysmorphia. And I think it's very much the other way around, Um, or perhaps if supplements even have nothing to do with it. Uh, Media image leads to body dysmorphia in many cases. The images of what a masculine body should look like is thrown around everywhere. I mean, a lot of people talk about how women's bodies are um, affected by the media, but very little is known that men are continuously thrown certain media images as well. Um, And that is probably a bigger contributing factor to men experiencing body dysmorphia than the supplement industry ever has been or ever will be. It says um, things like whey protein... Uh, creatine and L-carnitine. I uh, probably L-carnitine. Yeah. So, uh, can you talk about what those are and like, like why they say 
why NPR believes it, the writer of NPR believes, um, you know, that has possibly something to do with it or how they're wrong? I, I think that those three supplements are, I mean, they're both very common. Uh, whey protein is just regular old protein powder. I mean, I'm sure if you go to a store and you see muscle milk or gold standard from Optimum Nutrition or anything, that's just protein powder uh, that you make protein shakes out of. Creatine is a molecule that um, delivers, I don't know how much science your listeners understand, but it essentially delivers to your muscles what's needed for your muscles to work. Um, Creatine pretty much uh, affects the ATP rate in your muscles and how quickly your ATP regenerates. ATP is what your muscles use for energy. Um, Creatine increases the regeneration rate of ATP. Uh, Creatine also causes your muscles to swell up with extra water. So taking creatine makes you look bigger, but it's mostly water mass anyway. Um, and L-carnitine is just an amino acid. It's 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 used for muscle recovery. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Um, L-carnitine is usually a, a popular amino acid supplement that people will use uh, for muscle recovery. And for a prolonged period of time, it could also increase muscle endurance. Okay. Um... In the article, it says uh, it claims that men who use dietary supplements inappropriately also were more likely to have behaviors associated with eating disorders. What is your response to that? I think it's the other way around. I think men with eating disorders will be more likely to abuse supplements. Um, I it's it's pretty it's one of those like what came first, the chicken or the egg? And I think this argue I think this. Um, uh, article is insinuating that once you start using supplements, then you get to a point where you think you're not big enough or you're experiencing certain habits of eating disorders. I think it works the completely other way around. I think you develop symptoms of eating disorders first and then you turn to supplements as a way to facilitate those, uh, I guess, cravings or twitches or triggers. I'm, I'm not sure what, what word is appropriate, but I think you're using those supplements because of a pre-existing issue and that issue is not caused by those supplements. Okay. Uh, wh- I wonder, I'm wondering what you have to say about this in the article. It says, but the study also found that the men using supplements were more likely to feel gender role conflict, which Archie, Ar- um, I'm, Ash uh, Eero explained as underlying insecurity about one's masculinity. This isn't just about the body, he says. What this is really about is what the body represents for these men. It seems that the findings in part show this is a way of compensating for the insecurity or low self-esteem. Your thoughts on that? You know what? I'm, I'm going to be completely honest and say that that's a somewhat accurate statement. Um, You can go to the gym and you will see a lot of guys who go out of their way that they have to be, they have to feel like the biggest guy in the gym, the biggest, strongest, most powerful guy in the gym, like, yeah, man, I'm going to be the alpha today, like, and that, that happens more often than not, but there's a point where that ends, Usually, if you're the medium-sized guy in the gym, you have that desire. But I think the interesting thing is what you'll find when you start talking to the really huge, I mean the really strong guys, the people who are deadlifting in the 700s, the people who are squatting in the 400s, 500s, these guys, they are the most humble, down-to-earth, nicest guys you will ever meet. And... The stereotype doesn't hold up for them. I think when a lot of people start lifting, it's because they want their body to fit what the media throws at them at masculine. Um, maybe it's a personal desire to be stronger. I know in my case, the body image I don't really care so much for. What I go for is inhuman, unnecessary amounts of strength because I 
in a period of my life, I knew what it was like to feel weak. I hated it. So now I guess you can say it is an unhealthy obsession to get stronger. Um, but once again, this, like this article said, it's not the lifting that leads to the bad body image or the need to feel strong. It's the need to feel strong that comes first, which eventually leads to spending inordinate amounts of time in the gym or using an inordinate amount of supplements, which I do not use, by the way. I'm a bare bones kind of guy. All right. Um, he, um, the, the person I mentioned earlier, uh, Ach Iro, I'm sorry if I pronounce, sorry guys out there in the universe and the ga- in the planet that, uh, if I'm butchering his name, uh, I'm not the best with pronunciations. Uh, he, he is quoted as saying this in the article. Guys think taking supplements is healthy. They are convinced it's good for them. It's giving them all kinds of nutrients they wouldn't be getting otherwise, says uh, Cohen. Oh, it's actually a different guy. <laughs> this is ignorance about what proper nutrition is. Um, Arthur, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, and, and there he's absolutely correct. Um, it's a dietary supplement. It's not a, a dietary replacement. It is a dietary supplement. It is only there. These products, when appropriately used, are combined with a healthy diet and a good exercise program. Once you start using too much of some of these products, it actually ends up... <laughs> funny thing is something like if a product has a lot of caffeine it ends up working against the muscles you're trying to build um that i'm gonna give it that that is somewhat accurate Uh, and there's a lot of people at the gym who use a lot of these supplements as a crutch and instead of eating a good lunch they're gonna have a protein shake um and that's not the way you do it these things should be supplements and supplements only they should not replace anything in your diet and some people do do it wrong some people do use them for unintended purposes and that's and and that's unfortunate and that comes and that could be fixed through proper product education um their their marketing makes it every product seem like a miracle product take this or do this um i think the only way to fix that is proper education I'm proud to say that where I work, we go out of our way to ask our customers questions and products, um, questions about how they use their products, when they're using them, and we really try to help them use these appropriately and safely in a way that will supplement their diet and will help them reach their fitness goals. All right. And um, just um, something else to add on to this is that uh, this research apparently is, is preliminary and has yet to be pre, uh, pre peer reviewed. My bad. Yep. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, that's one of the biggest problems, and I love how they put that all the way at the end. But uh, first of all, this is a psychology study. Um, I maybe I should tell your listeners that I'm also a a biologist. I'm a biology student. I teach biology. I, my research is in um, biology and geochemistry, um, the psychology has a peer review problem, and they have a statistics problem, and uh, the APA has recently been absolutely uh, just disgusting in their ability to create um, uh, replicable studies, and it's, and it's a damn shame that psychology as a field has been diminished um, by poor use of, t- of statistical models and all of that stuff. Um, why NPR is writing an article on something that hasn't been peer-reviewed yet, I have no idea. Um, I can't even get to the actual study. It's not even that it's behind a paywall, but because it's not peer-reviewed, I don't have access to, uh, to it through any of my university's journals. So that's a big red line and that's probably due to why the article was trying to say that the supplement abuse comes before body dysmorphia when I'd argue if it does happen it's definitely the other way around. So you're arguing that um, body dysmorphia 
comes before the abuse. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you don't have a body image issue, you wouldn't be inclined to abuse these supplements. Now, you can have totally healthy body image and still use these supplements, and you're probably using them safely, appropriately, as they were intended to be used. Um, it's when you start developing these issues that you're going to start abusing them. And if you're using them safely to begin with, it's very unlikely that it will turn into uh, some kind of compulsion. Hmm. Well, Arthur, I'm glad I actually talked to you about this because I did not fully uh, grasp that concept that this was what the article was trying to uh to present in terms of an, argu of an argument that, or present not the art, not the article itself, but like the people who wrote the article and the people the the writer is talking about that their argument is that um, it's about uh, the psychological or what do they say again? What is their argument that it's about psychological damage before body dysmorphia or something like that? I I I, I would say that it's just like what the article is saying, or what am I saying? What the article is saying, how you and how you disagree with their hypothesis or their narrative. Yeah. Well, what the article is saying is that the use of these supplements eventually or somehow leads to body dysmorphia. Oh, okay, yeah, and you're saying that it's the body dysmorphia which is leading to the abuse of the substances. Yes, the body dysmorphia comes first. Okay, definitely. yeah, and uh, yeah, I, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to give my opinion because I kind of wanted to give the floor to you. Um, well, I mean, but buddy, if, if you have an opinion, I mean, I, I don't take it you're an expert in, in, in lifting, nor are you Disha certified <laughs> <laughs> as an uh, expert in supplements. But, I mean, if you, have, if, you ha if you have something to say, I mean, I can tell you if it's accurate or not. Okay. I feel like your point of view seems more legitimate than theirs because, like, they use the example of, like, dis, um, dysorex, dys, dysorexia, you know, girls, like, starving themselves, you know, and usually when we're, we're presented with, you know, that version, you know, with, with that narrative or that story, it's usually, like, uh, through the media or through, like, you know, um, through people like telling them or social like pressure or something like that. And like what you mentioned with body dysmorphia is how like, like the media also has a certain portrayal for men of how the ideal man should look. And that is true. You know, I don't think we should be denying that either, you know? And, um, you know, I, you see, you'll see it if you go to the stores, you'll see models of men on, you know, calendars, you'll see it, you know, there, there, you know, there's models for men and they have the, you know, there, there's a certain ideal about what, what a man should look like, you know? So, I think that there are some people that I can see where they get that impression from and they feel pressured, you know, seeing those other men like, oh, I, sh I, I believe I should be like that too, you know? Right. And, and, and I know, yeah, you're, you're very right. And I want to, before you get any hits or, or, or I get smacked at um, by any feminist who might be listening, yeah, we all know that comes from the, the patriarchal sort of society and how men should be the strong ones and the big ones. And yes, we know it's, it's all derived from patriarchy. We get it. We, we're just going to mention that and pass along. So so it doesn't sound like two guys talking about, yeah, but what about men? We have body image issues too. Yeah, okay, we get it. We can move on now that that's been said. <laughs> right, I mean, like, we're, we're not denying, you know, that women don't have body images, body image issues as well. We, we're, we're right. we, 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 we acknowledge that. We're, we're acknowledging that as well. So I think it's good to, you know, make that made that clear before people start assuming things you know right yeah yeah and and we know that the 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 image comes from the same source as well which is arthur well the uh, the, the sort of patriarchal society's image of the big strong man and the kind of like smaller frailer woman who is helpless kind of thing ah okay as, as the media likes to portray all right yeah. All right. Well, Arthur, thank you uh, so much for uh, taking taking your time to uh, give your opinion and your feedback. I really liked uh, 
what I, I when I saw what you're what you said on uh, FB, I uh, I was like, you know what, this guy needs a voice. I believe you. I believe you. You did, and I I'm glad I've given you a stage to where to speak. You know, to a, a worldwide audience. So yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, bud. All right, no problem. Thank you very much. May uh, may your squats be deep and your lifts heavy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you.